right, ladies and gentlemen, Matchroom Radio with David Diamante. We, uh, we have a great guest today, uh, trainer of the year, Derek James, um, former super middleweight fighter and um, Dallas native. Derek, it's great to see you, man. Good Thanks for joining us. I appreciate that. To have me here. Yeah, how you feeling, man? Feeling good, man. Ready to go, ready to get this uh, weekend kicked off and get it started. Yeah, and you look good. Appreciate that. Thank you. When did you guys get over here? Uh, I've been here for about two and a half weeks, two weeks or so. Is that is that about the time that you like to come to a spot when you? I know you've been over here before because right. you you were here when uh, you were up in Sheffield when Eric right. fought uh, Eric, Kel Brook. Kel Brook and um, so yeah yeah yeah. I, it was about that was about three weeks I believe somewhere in around that that range. But this one was about two and a half weeks. Okay. Right. Gives you time to get acclimated, get right. fighters acclimated. Get acclimated and it's like. Uh, to where it's not a rush, because you don't want to get the guy over and got this, got that, just ease into it. Absolutely. So look, there, there's so much to talk about. I, I'm really curious to talk to you. About, I've known you for years. I mean, right. when Errol was first starting, I was right. announcing some of his fights. That's, That's right. I think when I first started to get to right. know you. Right. Yeah. yeah, in New York. and. Um, but now you're with AJ, right? right. That's, that's obviously why we're here. Right. That's why you're here this week. Um, and everyone just can't wait to see Anthony get back in the ring. <laughs> so why did you guys pick Franklin? What did you see in Franklin? Why is he the right opponent right now? Well, I think that for Franklin, he's a good fighter. And I mean, he had a great outing his last fight. I think that mentally he's on a high, right? Because he felt like he won the last fight. But at the same time, I believe that it takes good fighters to bring better competition how to fighters. Correct. So I think that if you go for a walk in the park or easy fight, you may not get the best of the individuals trying to show something or showcase something. Basically saying that we may not get the best version of Anthony Joshua with an easy fight. So I think that with this fight, which I believe is very challenging, so it's going to have to show extra dimensions, a little bit more of what he can do and how he can control the tempo and things of that nature. And is he technically or defensively savvy as he wants to be. So we'll see. Do you find that mentality in the gym also? Oh yeah, no doubt. I think that you have to be able to uh, push the fighters. You have to be able to inspire the fighters who want to be better, be more. It's like with him, he, it's like we have to make him stop. Like, hey man, I'm, I'm going to my office, I'm, do I'm done. Cause he wants to, and that's, that's how you really want him to be because you want them to want more, yeah. right? And so that's what it is. I wanted to ask you about that because, you know, obviously in your stable, you've got some just monsters. Right. Obviously, Harold, right. um, Jermel, right. uh, Frank Martin. Martin yeah. So I know you're the type of guy, you don't want to take on a ton of different fighters. You right. want to take on a small stable so you can really focus on them. Right. And these are the type of guys that spur each other on right. and in doing that also spur you on right no doubt no doubt that's right yeah i work out i have to work out i have to stay fit so i run in the morning with weights and hit the bag every now and then just so i can keep up with them to be able to keep a schedule and i only i'm at my limit these four guys i'm done we am not nobody know can do it because it's like for me to be able to be with arrow knees and jamel knees and frame knees and aj knees i have to be able to have that time Specifically for these guys, I can't take five or six, seven, eight, nine guys. Most guys in this position, the way they fall is that they they go for the money and not for the quality. Because you lose, you have to lose. You're gonna lose the quality if you're chasing the dollar. Because you cannot be something to every one of these guys. And really, to kind of get to know them from an emotional perspective, to where you can kind of look at them and just kind of say, okay, how did you react to this? Because I have to be in tune with that. From here and here, me and here, I can't be in tune with if the guy's off or what he's thinking, how we're feeling. I can't be in tune with that if I have too many things going on. And how do you build that? To me, it's like building of a culture, of a mindset. It's almost just as important, if not more important, than the athleticism and the skill. Right, right. They have to have that mindset. Right. And it seems like something that you really are intent on doing and that you, you make sure that the fighters have that in the gym and that starts with you. That's the culture right. you're building right. in that gym, in the world-class boxing gym. I think that they see what kind of individual I am. So it's not even from a boxing perspective. I think it's from a man-to-man -man 
That's right. See what kind of guy I am. And to see how what I say is how I am and who I am, opposed to hustling. I'm like, I told AJ from the jump, I'm not, I'm, listen, I'm not a cheerleader. I'm not going to tell you what you can. And this is for the kids and this is for that. This, no, this is for you. Yeah. This is, you say, yeah, this is for me. This is what I want to do. So you have to be able to, I was just letting you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to cheer you on. I'm going to give you definitive questions and answers, definitive questions and answers to where you can go out and do everything you need to do. And leading by example also. Well, that's right, no doubt. And have you seen, how's the, how's the chemistry in the gym with AJ working with Errol and Jermel and, and, and Frank? That's cool, man, because they, 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 they watch each other work out. They watch each other trade. I mean, Frank's always watching AJ. Like, he watch him, you know. Right. And then when, when he's sparring in the gym, and then when Errol's in the gym, I make sure AJ is, like, sitting right next to him so I'm talking to him. Right. And so it's like, um, so I said, see, you're going to see how he's doing this. Is that, you know, so it's like that we all, they're all learning off each other. The one Errol is sparring, the white one with Jamel. So everybody's kind of like, it's all about, it's like you get a pen and paper and you just and go to school. Take notes. You see how you're doing this, you see how you're doing that. And I'm telling them, so watch this, watch that. So whenever somebody's smart, somebody's sitting here or here, and I'm talking to them, like, Nicholas, watch this. And so they see, and then it's like, you really, because really for AJ, it was better, because I don't work with them on the same things, right? But I work with them on similar things to build certain qualities within the fighter and build like a skill set, right? So what they'll see is what I'm working with them on a little bit and say, man, I can do it now. Because I remember when Errol, the first day AJ saw Errol spar, he said, he said, man, you're training well. He's like, he said, he said man, it's a bad deal because he, he could see it. Right? He said, man, you know, so when it's cool. And you have that, you and Errol have that synergy. Right. It's right. grown over years. Right. You first saw him, was it 09 at a tournament? No, well, really, I knew him before then because I knew him when I was fighting and I was looking for some sparring. And well, I met him, so I didn't know him, but I met him. I was looking for sparring, I went to that gym. And really, it was just about me working on my defense, not about throwing punches, not about hitting anybody. And he was this little bitty kid in the gym. And he was just like, and it was like, I'm not gonna hit you back, so you can go all out on me trying to Sure, sure. Up, because I'm working on my defense. Man, he would not, he was so scared. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> he was so fighting. But then later, years later, I came back to the gym. A couple years later, and he was like, at the development, so he was really good yeah, amateur. Right. He was a little fighter, whatever. And then I went to a tournament because I kind of support, I support local boxing. I went to a tournament, and this what happened. I set him up in the, Stand and his father's at, and I was like, look, I said, look at that man, he keeps doing the same, doing the same thing over and over. And his dad was like, yeah, can you help him? I was like, yeah, I can help him. And it was kind of, that's kind of how it, and then it's like, they called me like three months later, because Errol was like, no, nah, I don't want to do it, I wouldn't do it. And his father had to pay him to do it. Mm. But then when he saw he, His father had to pay him to train with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he, he was scared. Because he didn't want to, he didn't want to do it. Like, he didn't want to train with me. Why do you think that he want to do it? I don't know. I think he just he had. Is he a coach. intimidated? I know. I think he just had a coach and he was. Oh, he wanted to stick with his coach. And then I, but I think that the father kind of like. Cause then what happened was initially he was trained with me and then he would train with the father. I mean, train with the trainer. So we go me first, and then he goes without the coach. Then eventually the father asked the coach to say he's been working on Derek. You know, because the coach was like, "How is he getting so much mm-hmm. better?" And he said, "He's been training with Derek." He says, "What well, y'all gonna leave?" He said, "No, we're not gonna leave." Then the father came back. The next day, it was like, we want Derek to the corner, got him to know. So it was like, uh, and that's kind of how he put her, you know, he kind of put him out of the gym. So it was like, I had no choice but to train him. I'm curious how you got started in the sport. I know the Boys and Girls Club for right. you was a, a very big part of right. coming up. Right. And one of the big things for you is giving back, right. which I love, right. because I think you're doing this for the right reason. That's right. why you're successful, right. because you do it for the right reasons. Right. So you started, I started boxing, and that was kind of where the club took me so many different places that, you know, you start, like, you start traveling, I was like, okay, well, I like this. So I like the boxing anyway, but the fact we were traveling all over the place, which kind of helped that and changed the whole dynamics of it. So it was like, it was cool for me to do that too. So what, what I say that, and people say giving back, I say no paying my fare, because I, 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 
I know who I owe. If you let me say what I'm saying, like, you owe the people in your community. You owe the kids in the neighborhood. That's what we really owe, because somebody did something for you. So it's like, I'm really not giving back. I'm just paying my fare, paying what I owe. How was it as a pro fighter? I mean, you had a, a pretty good career yourself. Correct. Was it 27-1-1? It was 21-7. 21-7 one 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 with 12 knockouts? Oh, yeah, yeah. 14 knockouts. 14 knockouts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you fought on some big cars. You fought in right. Vegas. Right, right, right. right. Um, you didn't do the 92 Olympic. You, didn't you fight Chris Bird? I lost Chris Bird in the Olympic trial. Chris was a, was, was a, Chris is a tricky fighter, man. Was I, fighter. I was always such a huge Chris Bird <laughs> fan. You, maybe not. <laughs> no, no, I don't know, know if you're no, close no, now, no, but no, back in the day, maybe so, not. No, really, back in the day, we were great. I mean, his mother worked my corner sometimes. Okay. His brother Patrick and I, Patrick Bird and I were really close. Chris, we were like, we were really close. So it was like, but we all grew up together on the U.S. team and in the, in the circuit. And we just had to fight each other. And we understood, like, you got to fight you got. Yeah. And we're in the same way division. We got to fight because he moved up. Right. Now, I mean, we got to fight each other. And you were super middle. I was, no, I was middleweight. You were middle. 165. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Chris was a was a great fight. Such a tricky style. Like, he was very slick. He was very rolled his shoulders. And With the, the hands in the fight. face, yeah, 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 yeah. pawing and... You know, he good, he yeah, good, he was man. a really tricky fighter. I, I watched his whole career. I was, I was always such a huge fan of right, his. You know, right. for a guy of that of that physical stature to, right. to win a title, right. the way he did. He's like really like maybe five, eleven, six. He's tall. not that big, man. Not that big, not that tall. Not He's that really, big. really. I, right. I just enjoyed watching him fight. Very really skillful, and and also very skillful. He lives the life. Right. Um, God fearing man, right. and 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 he had the will. Right. You know, he he was a winner. And he right. comes from that family, you know, the, right. the family, the support behind him, you <laughs> right. know, even believed, his sister. He believed in himself. Like, when you can't be 5'11", 6 feet tall, fight a 6'7", six, 6'8", six, hey, guy, and you just go right in at it. Got to believe in yourself. Yeah, got to believe in yourself, for real. Let's talk about AJ in that. Right. right. What do you see with AJ now? How is he, how is he, because some people have, have it, it's not that they ever question his heart, I don't think, but it's that they question maybe AJ thinks too much in the ring or this and that, because at the end of the day, he is a, a large guy. Right. Right, 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 right. I mean, he's a physical specimen. Right, right, right. But it's like, we feel like he has to know that he's that guy. Right. right. You know, like there was that great line, uh, Lennox Lewis was, was fighting, and, and Manny Stewart said, quit the box and go out there and beat that guy's ass, right, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he went and did that. Yeah. Are you kind of instilling some of that in AJ? Well, really, it's like, you said a little bit of it, like to when you said that he thinks a lot. So, well, for me, and this is when you start training, like, you have all this in, in, intel. It's so, okay, I gotta implement it to the fighter. And you realize when you start training them that that intel is for somebody who's further down the line. So you give them pieces of bits of that to enhance his game. Yeah. Because when you realize all the other stuff makes them think too much, because it's too much, too much information, right? Right. So I short to him, I, Obviously, I showed it to him to let him know this is what's to come, right? This is what's to come. But then you go back and you simplify it, and you make it to where he doesn't have to think about it. I love that. And you make it to where it's like, um, so what I'll say is that what you'll see is what the foundation has been laid, right? And then you'll, there's more to come but because he's seen it because we worked on it, because you realize you can't train Jamel, Errol, Frank, and all these guys the same thing, give them the same thing because they're different they're guys. Different space. Well, not only are they different guys, they had different spaces. I mean, right. that I had Errol for longer, so he's going to have everything. Right? Sure. Then Jamel a little bit. So Jamel may not know everything that Errol does, but then Frank is last, so Frank doesn't know what Errol and Jamel do, but he sees it, so it's like, huh. And so AJ was able to see all of that also. So it's like, but he's not there yet because of you can't give him what I what they have. Because it's a building and such. Like, it takes time. It takes time. But I love what you said about keeping it simple. I'm, I'm right. a right. real believer right. in that. Because sometimes people do overcomplicate right. things. Right. 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 You know, life's one of those things where we can make life very complicated. Right. We can also make it very simple. No doubt. No doubt. And right. and sometimes just kiss, keep it simple, stupid. Right. Right. You know. Right. right. Yeah. It, and that, it, but sometimes that's really. I mean, there's levels to it, right? Of course. But like you said, you're with right. a fighter for a lot longer. Right. 
guy like Errol, he's going to understand on those different right, levels right, right. because you've been with him for so right. long. Definitely. You're obviously with AJ for a much shorter time, right. so you do have to kind of simplify it yeah. and, and break it down. Do you think we're going to see some of those changes even in this short time that you've been together? Yeah, I think so. I think that, you know, what's funny is that even as a as a trainer, I'm all, I live in a conscious state of self involvement but at the same time I always check myself like so even when I'm training him I was like you got to understand why are you doing this and doing that because you got it and you started giving a little too much right so the simple fight like okay there we go right so it's like I have to check myself and then you realize okay yeah so you'll see it because we're working on we worked on it you see all of the, I believe all the attributes that I've seen in the past or haven't seen, like a little bit of, you know, mobility, his mind is always thinking, very intelligent, very, he's an intellectual, so very intelligent as a fighter and as an individual. And he just brings that in the boxing. So we'll see it, we'll see it. And we can't, now I want, like I say, this is the foundation of it. Now, you know, once we keep stepping up, step and step up, you're going to start more and more and more and more. Is AJ the first heavyweight that you've trained? Yeah, none. Well, you know what? Not really. I work with some guys. I really wasn't in boxing. I was just working them out. So not really, but yeah, really the first boxing. Yeah. But do you find it all the same, or do you find a lot of differences between the weight classes? I think that it's similar, but at the same time, it's different because of the power. You know what I mean? Frank, Frank can really punch, right? But then AJ can really, really punch. But like, What's funny about it is with AJ, I'm working the mitts with him. It doesn't really bother me. When the first time I started working out, I was so sore on my shoulders. But like, if I'm holding a shot for Frank to throw a body shot, he'll throw a body shot and then knock my shoulder out. I was like, so I was at the watch how I do this. So, and they hadn't done that. But Frank to throw a body shot. And Frank's a southpaw too, yeah, right? Yeah, he throws a body shot. Like, oh, you know, man, my shoulder. You know, so yeah, you got to watch the really. Errol seems to want it. Why are we not getting this fight? I've heard you said in the past, look, it's great if a fight happens for the fans, but neither guy needs it. But I, I want to disagree a bit. Just because, look, they don't need it. But if we're talking legacy, when the dust is settled and we look back on these guys' career, people want to see the, you need the right dance partner and you need these key fights at the right time. And it's starting to become a little bit, the, the fight's getting overcooked. Like if the fight needs to happen, it's gonna happen. So I know you say they don't need it. Okay, they might not need it, but I do think they need Wait, it. And you know what? This is what I'm saying. So I mean, listen, if it happens, it really happens. And I mean, like this is it this. So you got several guys, like you look at Sue in it. He never fought uh, Aaron Pryor, but he's, wait, 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 but he's still Sue Ray Leonard. <laughs> wait, this is different. Roy Jones never fought Darius Mikulczewski. Okay. But he's still Roy Jones, right? So what I'm saying is, I, I would, if they could work it out, I, cause I'm not in that part of it. But I understand. to be honest, you know, I want I want to see, I'm, I'm tired of talking about it. So I, I mean, I'm like, I, I, we gonna, we gonna defecate or we gonna get off the pot. Right, you know I mean? that's it, that's so it. So it's like, it's a really, it's like, you know, you want to, you want to see it though. I mean, you know, and, or, or it, it put it like this. I want to see it go down or just stop talking about this lady. Yeah, go down or go away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either way. But that's, I mean, that's where I'm at. So, I just think it's important for the fans. And listen, yeah, I, I, I hear I your like point about, about like the that. Hawk. I like that too. And about, you know, Sugar Ray Lutton not fighting the Hawk. But he right. fought, he fought all the, four, yeah, you know, he yeah, fought yeah, the other yeah. three kings. Yeah. Roy had a lot of great that's dance right. partners. Right. Yeah. You know, not every fight can happen, but this right. fight is the fight that the fans want to see. You're right about that. Yeah. And, and I think both of them need it. I think they're both incredible fighters. And I think, you know, one day I wake up and think, oh no, the truth's gonna win that. Then the next day I say, no, Bud's gonna I, win I'm that. I'm gonna say it like this. I, I think that Errol has fought a lot of guys, right? Now we can't say the same about the other, cause I mean, I don't know why he hadn't fought so many other guys, but Errol fought a lot of guys. And they like, he went like, to say, he didn't fight Pacquiao, but he fought the guy to beat Pacquiao. He destroyed that guy. So it's like, um, but on the other hand, since she was like, you know, I like I want to I want to either dead it or do it. That's look, I'm with the dead it or do it. I need, but I mean, look, Ugas. That's a, that's a t-shirt. That's, that's a t-shirt. But a t -shirt. it was a little bit of an older Pacquiao. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, I still yeah, we, yeah. we you know we want to we want to see this fight. I, mean, I want I mean, listen, I want I want to I mean, 
Deader than do it. That's the T-shirt. Deader than do it. I'm with the that. T-shirt. And speaking of dead in it, our producer, I want. I, I could talk to you for hours, man. I got a lot to, but but I know you got work to do. You got to go train AJ. Right. Right. And our producer Scott's off camera, freaking out. Yeah. He's he's like, hurry up, yeah. hurry up. Man. Yeah, I see him out the corner. You see? I, I saw him right there. He, All right, so did. we always do something called fan questions. Would Would you be willing to answer a few fan questions? Yeah, okay, no problem. All right, let's see what we got here. Um, uh, fan questions, where are they? There's all these notes and I can't read. Oh, here we go. Okay. Gary Leahy asks, what's the dynamic in the gym like between Errol and AJ? Do they train at the same time? Do they socialize away from the gym? You know, they do interact at the gym. They, so they really, I have them stacked. So they don't train at the same time. Errol's first, then Frank, then AJ. But like AJ comes to the gym an hour early, get loose, get stressed out. So they do intertwine, they do interact, they do talk. And we had, I had an event for the Boys and Girls Scope Ball. I premiered Creed to them. Took like, like, like three or 400 kids from the Boys and Girls Club area club all over right. Dallas to go see Creed. So um, they interacted out at the gym that time. But normally AJ's in the house because he used to focus on camp. But that night he came out to support me, support the kids and they all did also. That's great, man. Thank you. Okay, Chrissy Bennett asks, you've won multiple accolades in your coaching career already. Which one means the most to you? I think that the one that means the most, I think is the one that I just recently got, right? And not the trainer of the year award, but I got an award for, from the Boys and Girls Club for the parents, the appreciation award. And that one I believe means the most because it was from the parents saying they appreciate what I do with the kids and do with the kids. Well, that one I think means the most because that's like, it's like everybody want to be, uh, I want, I'm going to be a hood superstar. So I want to be a neighborhood superstar. So that's, I'm going to go beautiful for us, a step in the right direction. Listen to the fans out there watching. I, I love Derek's answer because this is a man with a why. And that's why this meant so much to you because coming from the Boys and Girls Club, what it meant to you, winning the Ring Magazine Train of the Year, Sports Illustrated Train of the Year, that's all big accolades, right. but this one meant the most to you, and I love that. Right. Um, Joby underscore 14 underscore 14 asks, what does success look like this Saturday? Is it a win at all costs, or does AJ need to look good here against Franklin? Well, I always say, first, it's, it's a, that's, that's a twofold. I think that it's a win at all costs, right? But at the same time, I like to win the way I prepared to win. Shape. But a win at all costs because the winner we just keep stepping and rolling and like we said we're just going to keep rolling keep getting developing 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 so it's two answers to that a win at all costs but at the same time you want to win the way you want to but if you don't get it like that i just want to win no of course but also though you know obviously you come with an a plan but but do you have a b plan a c plan a d plan with AJ right now for this, or you haven't been able to even kind of get there. So, so yet. what happens, the way I strategize is, I have, I teach them to react to, it's all scenario. Yes. So, so there's ne- not necessarily the different, because each scenario that presents itself, who does this, who does that, who does this, who does that. So he prepare for everything that he does, opposed to one round of this, no. We're just going to you react to this, react to that, react to this. So everything is reactionary to where he's present because you have to be in the moment, right? And so it's all situational. So everything is prepared situation. I could not agree with you more, and I've heard you say this in the past, being in the moment. To me, focus is everything. Right. Uh, no matter what task you're doing, but especially in boxing. Right. I, mean, I don't have to tell you, there's another man in there trying to take your head off. Right. It's very serious. Okay. You must be focused. Right. How do you instill that in your guys to be in the moment? Well, you know, the funniest thing I tell them is that I say that it's not him, it's you. And what I mean by that is if he hits you with something that you're not doing, right? Because he, he's supposed to throw punches at you. It's up to you to be focused enough to and stay in the moment to be present enough to acknowledge the punches coming and going. Cause it's not he's not that great. It's something that somewhere you're lagging some focus and you've lost. So it's, it makes them be self take accountability for themselves. And at the same time, I teach like uh, to where the self correcting. Like I said, if you need to do something you did, so you need to put your in a body, do this with that. So it's always self correcting. Is always keeping them in the moments where they can 
just acknowledge what's going on because I talk low. So they can't hear me, so I teach them to where they don't even need me. Right. Right, so you you know why it's you because this, I mean, you deserve it. I tell them, like, you deserve it. You're supposed to get it like that and do this and that. That's what I tell them, I mean, the guys, because you got to be focused. You do talk low, but in the corner, it's going to be one voice, yeah? Right, no doubt. No one doubt. voice. No doubt, yeah. All right. Yeah. Listen, I, I wish you the best of luck. What a stable you've had. What a career you've had. I mean, Spence, yeah. Harden. Have, have, Chabot. have. Had is in the past. No, no, have, have. No, what, what a <laughs> yeah. career you have. Have. Yeah. Like that, had yeah. and have. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Had and have. Yeah. And, and we're really looking forward to the fight this weekend. Um, for the fans out there, uh, we've got a great fight this weekend at the O2. Anthony Joshua's back in action against the 989 Assassin. Right. Um, Derek James, thank you for joining us. Match and Wade with D David Diamante, and we'll be back next week. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you, Derek. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.